Hello everybody, my name is Katie Allen and I am a student in Images of Leadership and Media for Summer A and this is my first Invictus assignment. Now I've tried to record this assignment a few times already and talking about everything I think that relates between the movie and the books takes way too long so I picked out a few of the most important things that I thought were relative and I'll start with Maxwell's book about the laws of leadership. The two laws that I felt that we read about were most prevalent for this week with the movie Invictus. First was the law of influence and then the law of navigation. Um, the law of influence basically says that to be a powerful leader you have to be influential. And Mandela definitely was influential. However, he started out with partial influence. He only really had the support of the black community that voted him into his presidency and not necessarily the white community who thought that he might not necessarily do the best things for them while he was in office. So he saw the importance of having their support as well and worked to gain their followership and to gain their trust. Mandela also used the law of navigation, which is about being able to see a path and find a successful way to get to a vision. Basically, Mandela studied while he was in jail. He studied the people who are in power right now the way they thought and he had 30 years to do this and he could then also come up with his own leadership plan his own plan of navigation to guide South Africa and it was clear when he got out of jail and got into his presidency that he knew what he was doing and he knew where he wanted to take the country now I'm going to try and relate the movie to Shankman and Allen's book about emotional intelligence and the part that I want to relate it to was the part under consciousness of context where it talks about group savvy and when you can go into a group kind of sit there observe and learn the way it works learn the dynamic learn who's really in charge so that you can most effectively be a leader of that group or a follower in that group and this is interesting because as much as Mandela definitely could do that he almost changed the group dynamic it's like he came in figured out how things work worked more so how they didn't work and then change the dynamic of it and one of the examples where you can clearly see this is when he merged his security officers black and white in the very beginning of the movie and this wasn't something that they were used to and they obviously weren't happy about it but they learned how to work together and became cohesive and so I thought it was just really neat Mandel almost pushed it further than learning the group and learning the way things worked, and he kind of dictated how they work. Okay, the next question is a little open-ended and asks what kind of leadership do you think Mandela was employing when he decided to utilize the World Cup to bring together South Africa? And the best thing I could come up with was that he was trying to create a leadership based on a strong followership. He wasn't trying to do anything authoritarian or anything like a dictator would. He knew that followers were what he needed and influence was important and that he wanted all of the people of South Africa to support him and he knew that to do this he had to bring them together first and he knew that he could do that through the World Cup which he successfully did and finally gained a strong followership as support. Um, and then it asks what skills did he need and what experiences might have prepared him for this type of leadership. So some of the skills I came up with were navigation, which I talked about earlier. He had to really know the path that he was going to go on to be able to accomplish this, to get to know the rugby players, to be able to go to the right meetings and say the right things, because whenever he spoke in the movie he just sounded so wise because he knew what he was going to say. Um, also the skill of perseverance, being able to continually go at it even when he was getting sick and was ill. He was still striving because he knew that this is what he needed to do. And also he was kind and he was gentle and he wasn't harsh and this appealed to the people and made them be able to trust him. Now obviously the experience he had, or at least the biggest one I can think of, was him being in jail for almost 30 years. And basically this allowed him to gain perspective from reading things and from observing things and from just having the time to really learn how he was going to lead when he got out of jail. And 
you know, history can teach us what things work and what things don't. And he had plenty of time to look into what has worked in the past and what hasn't. And I think that really gave him the skills to be able to navigate the country of South Africa. For the next question, it asked about the statement that Mandela gave Pinar and what about it is most compelling to me. And it says, a leader's job is to get followers to believe they are capable of doing more than they think possible. And this is compelling to me because most people don't believe they can accomplish the greatest thing that they actually can. A lot of people feel like they have a limit. And the truth is that when you push your limit, sometimes you realize that you can accomplish more than you think. And by having someone like Mandela, for example, support you on this and give you encouragement, it allows you to really strive for that thing and potentially achieve things that you didn't think possible before. And I've had this experience personally with coaches in high school on sports teams and really not thinking that I was going to be able to accomplish something but after hard work and a lot of support I accomplished things I never thought possible. Further this question asked how do you think leaders can best accomplish this goal of getting followers to believe they're capable of doing more than they think and I think it's just by being supportive and by being encouraging because Sometimes it's hard to have from within you enough impetus to get something done, but if somebody kind of gives you a push and believes in you, you might be able to do it. So I think that leaders just really have to be encouraging and rewarding to their followers to get them to do more than they think they can. The next question asks about Mandela's time in prison and how it helped him shape his approach to his position as a president and reuniting the community. And I feel like I touched on this a little before, so I won't take too long on it. But I really think that the time in prison allowed him to study and to reflect and to think about certain types of leadership, different types of leadership, and how they've worked or not worked in the past. And to really think about his vision for South Africa, because a leader, a leader without a vision really isn't a leader. And Mandela definitely had a vision that he probably developed while he was in jail. And so by the time he was done with jail, he had this vision and he could navigate South Africa because he knew exactly what he needed to do because he'd had plenty of time to think it over and to reflect on it. Okay, the last question before the activity part of the assignment asks what separates the people who endure traumatic circumstances between those that are broken by the experience and those that rise and triumph from them. And this really relates to the poem Invictus, actually, I think. But it's basically the difference between the people who dwell on their traumatic circumstances and the people who learn from them. Now, the thing that separates these two kinds of people, the people who dwell on things and the people who learn from them, is a hope for the future and passion. Just knowing that things can get better. And a lot of times this might stem from having a vision. If you have a vision and you're passionate about it, even if you're thrown a lot of curveballs along the way, you're still going to work towards it. And this is definitely a strong characteristic of good leaders. They're able to use their vision to keep them going. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys my artistic piece for the poem Invictus. I don't know how well you can see it. Okay. Basically, it's a ship because the line of the poem that stands out to me the most is the last line that says, I am the captain of my soul. And whenever I've read this poem before, because it was one of my best friend's favorite poems when I was younger, um, is the captain line. It always made me think of a ship. So that's what I decided to paint with watercolors. And basically, you can see just there, the waters are turbid over here. And this kind of shows, you know, the horror of the shade and everything that it talks about in the poem. But over here, you can see that the captain is able to navigate into waters that are clearer because he knows that they're out there. It's kind of representative of the fact that leaders have a vision and they know that sometimes things are rough. But if they keep sight of that vision, they can make it to a clearer place. Just kind of like the poem says. And... For instance, the last two lines about, I'm the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Basically, leaders can navigate themselves 
where they want to go, even if the times get rough. And so the first question asks what stands out about the poem to you, and I honestly think it's the perseverance of the poem. Just the idea that through all these difficult things, you can still reach your vision. And what's the deeper meaning under the surface that I believe inspired Mandela? I really think it is that perseverance that inspired Mandela because, I mean, the man was in a jail cell for 30 years, a small jail cell where all he did was read and probably pray, but he got out of that cell and he had a plan and he became the president of a country and didn't harbor any feelings of resentment, at least that he showed. He was strong and he overcame and he let the past go and he found the the sunlight clear waters like in my art depiction. Okay, to wrap up with the, the last question, it asks to discuss the role and power of words as they relate to leadership. And I think that words can serve as impetus and as a fuel for passion. For example, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech moved so many people to support civil rights. And this poem in and of itself, a leader could read this in a time of darkness and have it re-spark his fire. And so I really think that words help bring passion when they're delivered in the right way and can be very powerful. And that's the end of my presentation. I knew it was a little bit rough, but I hope you enjoyed it and got the answers to the questions that were on the worksheet out of it. Thank you so much for watching.